Hey, welcome back. So in this video, we will be talking about the behind the scenes that happens when we compile our program. So uh, we can call this compiling and linking. I'll explain this in detail. So what we did in the last video was we ran this command gcc hello world.c and it gave us the binary file a.out which we ran and got our specific output hello world. So in this video, I want to talk about what exactly happens behind the scenes when we run this cute little command gcc hello world.c. So, um, it is actually a three step process. It happens step by step. I'll write those three steps out here. Uh, three steps of compiling. So the first one is, uh, compiling. Second one is assembling and, th and the third one is linking. Right. Uh, what I use here is are called comments. Uh, we can you can put them in by using these double slashes, or uh, whatever you write in comments will get ignored by the compiler. Yeah. So uh, it happens in three steps: compiling, assembling, and assembling and linking. Right. So uh, let's talk about compiling. But before that, I want to show you something. Um, if you do gcc dash dash help, you will get a list of all these flags you can pass to gcc to like uh, tune its behavior, right? So you look if you look around, you can see this minus s flag or hyphen s flag. It says compile only, do not assemble or link. And the same way below that we have hyphen c, compile and assemble but do not link. We will be using these two flags to like to show how this .c file got transformed into the output we wanted. Uh, a lot of this will make sense if you had paid attention to the idea I discussed in the introduction video, which like gave us the whole motive for designing a compiler, which was we needed a tool that could convert code that humans could read into code that machines could read. So I want to show you the process that how it exactly happens. So. In the first step, the compiling step, what happens is the compiler takes a .c file and it converts into assembly or assembly language. So assembly language is another low level programming language, which is very processor specific. So Intel processors have their own assembly language. Uh, AMD processors have their, own, have their own assembly language like that. But now we have uh, the industry has standardized. So we have this standard x86 assembly that is used by almost all processors. So when we do the first step, the compiling step, what the compiler will do is it will convert your C code into assembly code. Now I'll run the command to do that and we will see what this looks like. So GCC uh, minus capital S hello world dot C. What this will do is just compile. So when you press enter, uh, we get this file hello world dot S. Now this S is the assembly language output for the hello world.c file. So as you can see, it looks a bit weird, but if you have done assembly language programming before, or you at least heard of assembly language, this will look kind of uh, familiar. It is still in English. Uh, so you can see the string we pass hello world and the main function and all that. Uh, now this, this is a bit confusing and all. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is the assembly language output of our hello world.c file. This is the first step of our compiling procedure. Now what happens after this is what what is called assembling. So in assembling, as the name signifies, we take the assembly language and we convert it into object files. When we convert into object files, what happens is every source files, for example, if we have three files, a.c, b.c and uh, say c.c, then all these three files will get converted into a.o, b.o and c.o. I'll, I'll run this and show you. You'll understand much better. So gcc minus c hello world, sorry, hello world.c. So it gave us this hello world.o file. Now the catch here is uh, if we try to open this hello world.o file, we cannot view this file because this file is not text. What the dot o file, the object file, what it is, is it's the binary equivalent of what our C file was. 
so the compiler took the assem so every for example this hello world.s file every command you see this uh, move queue leaq call move well each one of those has their own as uh, binary output and then those outputs are actually compiled together in this object file now we cannot view this file but there are tools that we can use to see the content of what what this file has exactly so one such tool is called hex dump it will uh, convert those binary digits into hexadecimals actually the hexadecimal equivalent of the assembly language and then we can view it so if we do hello world dot o you can see a bunch of numbers get printed here like a crazy amount of numbers and uh, this is the kind of if you can see there are zeros and ones and some alphabets because this is hexadecimal output so this is the code that actually gets inside the operating system and then gets passed to the microprocessor and then it is run to get us the output we need this is an extreme oversimplification of the whole process so i want to keep it simple that so you can kind of think that this hello world dot c file once this this hello world dot c file got converted into this and then got converted into this and this was passed to our operating system to run and give us the output hello world on the screen so these are the three steps that actually happen when we compile any file so the last step is the last step is called linking it's a pretty simple procedure what happens is uh, as i told each source file gets its original dot o file so if we have multiple sources for example we have 5 10 or 15 files so eventually uh, 5 10 or 15 object files will get generated by the assembling part so what the linker will do is in the linking process it will take all those object files bundle them together and create one binary which is also known as the final output or whatever so the a dot out file signifies that final output so when we do finally when we do without any we remove all the flags and we do gcc hello world dot c the file is compiled it is assembled it is linked and we finally get a dot out we can pass a name for this a dot out file so if we do um, gcc hello world dot c minus o say hello world uh, we will get a hello world file we can run that hello world file and we will get our output this is just a way to rename this if you don't pass anything it will by default name it to a dot out now there is one more thing i want to show you is the file types of these uh, kind of files so if we do there is a command in linux which says just file and we do hello world dot c it will tell us what kind of file it is right so if you do hello world dot c it will say it's a c source and it is ascii text right now if you do hello world dot s it will say it's an assembler source and ascii text uh, ascii text means we can open it in a, open it in our editors and read it now if we do file hello world dot o we get this elf 64 bit lsb relocatable this is just a fancy name for like fancy more technical name for the object file the binary code that was generated and finally if we check the file type of hello world the hello world or like a dot out they are both the same it's an elf 64 lsb shared object this is the final binary output that we get a uh, 64 bit because i have a 64 bit processor here so that's the final output file we get which we can eventually run and get the output so i hope this was not a this was not too much or too intimidating for someone new uh, a lot of professors mostly ignore this part they don't teach it uh, usually but i think this is important to understand what exactly happens and how our codes codes are like transformed and properly assembled together in the end if you go on and like do complicated projects in c a lot of this knowledge will come handy because a lot of times you have errors in a in a specific stage of these three stages so if if it's a linking error you will understand okay maybe there is some issue with joining all the files together or something like that so i think that's it for this video uh, i have written all this in a much cleaner way here you can give it a read if you want and you can try these commands out for yourself you can write some other code and try and compare things and try to understand 
this this assembly language and all are usually covered in the further years of undergrad so for example in third year or fourth year we get subjects that we actually deeply understand what this is this was an extreme oversimplification of the whole thing there is a lot going on actually but uh, knowing this at that level of detail won't be really useful i want to i wanted to given just an overview of what happens in the background uh, don't worry if you didn't understand all of this uh, if you are a total beginner i can understand that but make sure when you're done with a good number of tutorials and you have written some programs and you kind of understand what's happening uh, make sure you come back to this video and like connect the dots of what's happening exactly uh, i hope you enjoyed this uh, video uh, i'll link the necessary things in the description below and you can follow us on our social accounts uh, you can tweet at us if you have any doubts or concerns or if you, if you need any help uh, in the next video i'll cover data types and variables and all the all the cool stuff that we can do with c so yeah i'll see you then bye